If you see this video, it probably means that I'm still on board the ship currently, probably on the way to Singapore. And right now I'm actually sitting on the Rainbow Warrior with Greenpeace in the Australian Bight. Yeah, I'm Manuel, a marine biologist from Austria, also the founder of Project Manaya, a little NGO of my own. And the reason why I'm well, coming to you basically on screen and not in real life is because right now I'm standing on board the Rainbow Warrior together with the whole organization of Greenpeace. And we are trying to get big oil out of the Australian bite. So that kind of kept me busy up until now, which is my main excuse not to be here. All that being said, I was asked to sort of wrap up a little video for you people to get an idea of what we will do with the price that we've been rewarded and that I'm very, very grateful for. And well, I always feel like people care much about what you do if you have a good reason why you do it. And my main motivation is that I've always loved the oceans. I've always loved to have a look underneath the surface and just go swimming, have a look at the fish and see what's down there, which is just an incredible universe in itself and that most people don't even get to see. Yeah, so out of that passion I started diving very early. I went to university, studied marine biology and then kind of stumbled into a sailing sort research life and eventually came to the realization that Lots of the research that is being done on big ships could also be done on small boats. So I started my own little NGO called Project Manaya and we basically run small scale research projects from aboard our sailing vessel Independence right now in the Mediterranean. Project Manaya is sort of my own personal little baby. It's a very small NGO based in Austria, even though we never really work there because it is meant for ocean conservation and research mostly. And in the last couple of years, we've been working in Myanmar. And since last season, we are actually based in the Mediterranean aboard our small research sailboat, the Independence. We are mostly self-funded, minus the odd donation here or there, which means, well, basically, I have to go back to work to keep this whole thing going. Um, and in that time, obviously, I can't do any work with the NGO. So it's always a bit of a balance. And in that respect, also, this price is helping us out a lot because it basically runs our entire next season. Um, yeah, we do have a lot coming up in the next season already. So we are mostly following up from this year. But the main points for the next year are our invasive species work will continue and there's more and more invasive species that keep migrating into the Mediterranean Sea and most of them come out of the Red Sea where the Suez Canal has been opened many years ago by now but we have more than a thousand invasive species in the Mediterranean already and it is becoming more every year and in the last year already we sort of handpicked a few species that are easy to identify and easy to spot for everyone so we basically called out to people who are in the area, including dive centers, NGOs, divers, yardies, all sorts of people that get in touch with the water one way or the other. And those are usually the people who care the most about the environment there. And that is, for me personally, one of the big reasons to involve them. Because once people get interested in it, they learn more about it, they get more curious, they ask more questions. And once you start asking questions, then you really care and then you will do everything in your power to sort of help protect and preserve the areas. So that is my main drive to involve all these dive centers and the NGOs and also to try get the word out a lot more than it is so far. So invasive species basically means it is a species that is there but really shouldn't be. So in the Mediterranean the easiest ones to recognize would be the lionfish, really spiky, poisonous, wouldn't necessarily kill you, but it can be really, really painful. And the other one is the pufferfish that slowly sneaks around the corners of Greece right now and is apparently moving into the Adriatic already. But one of the big issues is that nobody really has a handle on how far they got so far. 
So we know the lionfish is already in Turkey and it's in Cyprus and it's slowly settling in in Greece. The same is true for the pufferfish, but nobody really focused on the distribution and like the first sightings. And basically, once you see the first one, that would be the time to step in and do something about it. Because if you give it another year or two, chances are the populations will just explode. And then it's a little late to act. So with this project, we're trying to get, first of all, more numbers and more sightings in. We feed all those sightings back into a database that will be available online for everyone to use. And second, we want to involve as many local communities and well, shops and other people as possible. And of course, we try to get the word out. So throughout the entire season, we will make sort of video updates every week, like the one that you're watching right now, only not quite so specific. Um, and give everyone a little bit of an update of what it is we're doing, what it is we're doing with the money that you guys gave us and how things are going and what's the next week gonna bring. So when all this started about five years ago now and Project Manaya was founded, it was really more of an idea, sort of, hey, we can wrestle up a few people, we can clean the beach, we can do little things here and there, do talks at schools and try to raise a little bit of public awareness. And then it sort of snowballed into something a little bit bigger and we got our first boat and did the work in Myanmar and we created a coral garden there and a small protected area and it was great to see it all grow but well having said that it's always a lot of work so you go back to your actual job then you take everything that you earned there you throw it back in there and it's incredibly rewarding especially when you get to work with people around you and you see the impact that you, you as a single person can have in a small environment and it's just very special to see this change happen around one and yeah, last year we were lucky enough to stumble across our next boat, which now is in the Mediterranean, which sort of brings me a little bit closer to home again, which is very nice. And well, I just love the Mediterranean for many different reasons. And well, again, the idea was to well, bring a few communities together, bring a platform to people who want to get something done and invite other researchers on board to run their own sort of projects. And all this is incredible. And every time you hit the down point and you're like i'm not sure if it's really worth it and it's just a lot of struggle then something comes along and picks you right up again so we had the moment where an ngo from uh, montenegro came along and they wanted to do an expedition to look for dolphins and it was glorious like we spotted the big school in the middle of the night and they just hung around the boat all night it's absolutely beautiful and now this hans Haas prize came along out of the blue and I really am super happy to be in this spot to be able to say thank you for that, even though I didn't really expect it. <laughs> and yeah, those are the moments that really keep me going again. And I'm really, really looking forward to another great season in the Mediterranean. Thank you very much once again and I hope you all have a beautiful evening in the House of Meeres. Say hello to the Hammerhead Sharks for me and enjoy. This is Manuel signing out from the Great Australian Bite.